that nothing can change that and as we pray today and we pronounce the blessings on your life when you say amen there is an affirmation god says so to you christ says so to you. the holy ghost says so to you the angel says so to you we believers say so to you and devil has no place in your life number two is a word of assurance you know I, i'm prayed for and then i say amen that amen is an assurance for me i'm out of that despair i'm into hope i'm out of that fear i'm into faith i'm out of that anxiety i'm in assurance i'm out of that need i'm in divine supply because there is an amen and it is a word of assurance number three is the word of acceptance acceptance that we say this promise is yours well, so if the postman could bring a letter to your house and then you reject it but when you stretch out your hand and you collect that letter you say thank you very much it's an acceptance and when the word of god is spoken and the blessings of god are pronounced in your life let's say for example you're sick let's say you have some attacks and affliction and then the man of god says you're healed if you are wondering and saying i'm healed but look at how serious the problem is you have not accepted what the postmaster brought but when you say amen it means i accept that the blessing is mine it means the healing is mine it means the salvation is mine amen is a word of acceptance we pronounce the blessing and you show that that is mine i possess that i receive that a word of acceptance number four is a word of agreement a word of agreement you see when the preacher preaches and he prays and then you responded if two of us shall agree as touching anything which two of us the one that is praying and the one that is being prayed for and then the one that is praying he mentions the blessing it says oh lord god of heaven there's the need of this individual now according to your promise heal him that's one person saying heal him and then the other person is saying amen when you say that amen it's a word of agreement i agree with that blessing i agree with that healing i agree with that deliverance amen is a word of agreement i'm in agreement with the prophet of god I'm in agreement with the apostle of the Lord. I'm in agreement with Christ. I'm in agreement with God. Number five is a word of appropriation. Appropriation. When you appropriate something, you see, when you have all these things, it's like we have, and you know, we put food on the table, a plate here, a plate here, a plate here, and it's general for everybody. And then we now say, now go and take it. If you stand back, you're not appropriating. You are not taking what belongs to you. But when you step forward and you straight forth your hand and then you take that plate, nobody is going to tell not to do that because it's for everybody. This is yours. And then you know that now it is my turn. You've heard, you've heard of, uh, you know, the couples that got my hand. There's no child. They had no child. Now they have got their own children and now it is your turn. Your father of the one that you know the father was uh, kind of uh, put in the prison and already they pronounced that he was going to die by hanging thinking that he must have been part of the people that killed the one that was killed and then came for prayer and then i declared that he will not die he will not be hanged and then she collected her own miracle and now i'm telling you i'm passing it on to you you will not die your loved ones will not die a shameful death in jesus name it is a word of ap appropriation appropriate that that is mine number six is a word of acknowledgement acknowledge i acknowledge this and i'm even able to tell people now after i've been prayed for here and then i say amen that's acknowledgement i go there i tell my friend you know something is happening to me i'm free how do you know you're free acknowledge i acknowledge that i say that because this is mine every time you see people after prayer and they say amen is acknowledgement that's mine that blessing is mine and that privilege is mine that provision is mine number seven is the word of assertion assertion that means uh, you're so sure you have ascertained that this is the promise of god and it is yours a word of assertion every time you say amen now let's understand what you're saying understand that 
By that, amen, nothing will reverse that blessing. Amen. Number one is affirmation. Number two, it's assurance. Number three is acceptance. Number four is agreement. Number five is appropriation. Number five, number six, acknowledgement. Number seven, a word of assertion. You are blessed. Yeah. I said you are blessed. Yeah. From now on, prayer will take a new view, a new understanding, a new revelation in your life. And every time you, you have somebody praying for you, especially somebody who knows the word and who is sent of the Lord to your life, and it brings a blessing upon your life, then what do you say? Yeah. Amen. And nothing will reverse that in Jesus' name. I come to point number two. Now point number two is the admonition and the application of joint servants. I'm looking at Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah chapter 8. And I'm reading here from verse 7 all through to verse 8. You see Nehemiah with Ezra. They opened the word of the Lord unto the people. And you're going to see what's going to happen now. In Nehemiah chapter 8, look at verse 7. And Jeshua, and Banai, and Sherebiah, and Jami, and Akob, and then Shabetzai, and Kodiah, and Mahasaiah, and Kalita, and Azariah, and Josabach, and Hanan, and Peliah, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law. You see here, and there are times that there are some people, the only thing that it is the Jews. That is teaching. No, the son of us together. And what does such a ritual brother is saying? We're in agreement together. We're sitting together. We're teaching you together. And then our local pastor there comes and he brings the word to you. You accept that word as if the GS himself was talking to you because we're joined together in the ministry. And then the members of the choir, their own style is not the preaching, it's not the preaching style, it's a singing style, it's the same ministry. And they bring that word unto you through the melody. And then we are joined to get the joint servants of the Lord. All the Levites and all the priests and all the people, they join together with Ezra and with Nehemiah. And it is that joint servant church. That actually brings the blessing upon our lives. That's why it says in the latter part of that verse 7, it caused the people to understand the law. And the people stood in their place. So they, they read. Not just him, not just one person. It's not just me. You know, some people, they'll say, I'm waiting for the final time when the pastor will come. I about all those things that went on before. It's all of us doing it together. He takes his turn. She takes her turn. They take their turn. I take my turn. And then we bring everything together. Composite ministry. Joint servanthood. That we're ministering to the church all together. That's why it says in that verse, so they, not just one person, so they read in the book, in the law of God, distinctly. And they gave the saints. And they caused them to understand the reading. We are in agreement together. And uh, the pastor who uh, led the prayer just remarked on the unity we have in the church. And this is the kind of unity that brings the blessing upon us. That Did you hear the choir? God is holy. Do you hear the preacher? God is holy. Do you hear the prayer? person leading the prayer? God is holy. We say the same thing. And it is because we say the same thing. That is why there is no contradiction of blessing in your life. When I say you are blessed. Our house fellowship last says you are blessed, and the side that says you are blessed, and the local pastor says you are blessed, and the group pastor says you are blessed, and the region of ourselves says you are blessed, and state of ourselves says you are blessed, national of ourselves says you are blessed, and then when you go out there, yeah, your friend is going to go bless you. Everybody is blessing you. How can you remain poor? How can you remain sick? How can you remain any problem? Because the blessing of the Lord will be upon every one of us in Jesus' name the unity of that ministry that God has granted unto us. I want you to look at Romans chapter 15 united together in the blessing. Romans chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 4. It says, whatsoever things were written aforetime, 
What it is for our learning, that is all we have read here in Nehemiah, that they all did it together. That's written for our learning. And it says over here that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Come to verse 6. In verse 6, they're talking about the unity in ministry, unity in service, joint servants together. Verse 6, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God. That is, whether we're preachers or singers or ushers or security or, you know, technical people, with one mind and one mouth, we glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 52. Isaiah chapter 52. Let's see the joint service that we occupy, that we get involved with in the house of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 8. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. One single voice. That's the unity we have. For the voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye to eye. When the Lord shall bring again Zion. The Lord is bringing us out of captivity. Out of all our problems. And all those bondages, they are broken in Jesus' name. That's why it says in verse 1, Awake and wake and put on thy strength, O Zion. The days of strength have come for you. And the days of joy and celebration, they have begun for you in Jesus' name. It says, Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth, from now on, from this day of celebration, there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean that's the beginning of that chapter look at chapter verse 15 so shall he sprinkle many nations the king shall shut their mouths at him for that which had not been told them they shall see what miracles who have not heard of will come up in your life yeah. spectacular things signs and wonders will come up in your life in jesus name yeah. and then it also says and that which had not been heard shall they shall consider we're looking at first corinthians chapter one first corinthians chapter one telling us about the shared ministry the joint ministry the joint service of the joint servants First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10 Now I beseech you brethren By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ That she all tell me Speak the same thing That's our strength That's the blessing we have And that is the joy we have That whether you are the headquarters church here Or you are the church in the local government a church in the region, a church far away in that northern state, or the church far away on that far away missionary field, say the same thing. So that what has been transmitted to us in those far away places is the same thing we are hearing at the local church. Because they all touch the people with one voice, with one mind, with one interpretation. There was no confusion about the interpretation. That's how those people in this in immense day, that's why they were blessed. And that's what the Lord is telling us, the same thing to him says, that there be no divisions among you, but that ye may be made perfect, perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same mind judgment will preach the same gospel will emphasize the same thing and why are we emphasizing the same thing so that the people will bring the people to salvation will bring the people to sanctification will bring them to being baptized in the holy ghost will bring them being prepared for the coming of the lord we're looking at colossians chapter 1 verse 28 colossians 1 verse 28 whom we preach not whom i preach whom we preach we're together can you see the unity we're talking about? Paul the Apostle said, Me and Silas and Timothy and Titus, we, all of us together, Epaphroditus, and everyone, we preach, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. 
Paul the apostle was saying, you know, all of us were just doing the same thing. When Titus comes to you, the purpose of ministry is going to be the same as mine. When a Titus, a Prophonitus, any other person comes to you, the purpose of ministry is going to be exactly the same, that we together may present everyone perfect in Christ Jesus. First Corinthians, I'm reading there from chapter 1 again. First Corinthians chapter 1. And you'll see here again, it's we, all of us, together, doing it in unison, doing it together. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23, but we will preach Christ. You see that? Not just I, Paul, not just him, Apollos, not just him, Aquila, not just her, Priscilla, but we all together. And it is the secret of our strength and the secret of people getting to the blessings of God and remaining in our blessings of in the blessings of God is that we're saying the same thing, we're preaching the same thing, we're emphasizing the same thing like they did in the days of Nehemiah. We preach Christ crucified unto the Jews his stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them, verse 24, which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. That's why the Lord is saying that if we are preaching the same thing, we should read the same Bible, the same text. Not somebody reading King James, another one is reading the NIV, another one is reading the New English Bible, another one is reading the same Bible, the same thing that we're reading. And then the same interpretation as we read, we, bring, we know the purpose why the Bible was given. The purpose is for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Whether we're reading from Genesis, or we're reading from Leviticus, or we're reading from Ecclesiastes, or we're reading from Songs of Solomon, or we're reading from Jeremiah, or we're reading from Ezekiel.